Hello, welcome to my media log for the month of September. This is just going to be all the books I've read, manga I've read, anime I've watched, shows, whatever I feel like including for the month. And starting off, as always, will be the manga, but there will be timestamps throughout. It is the first weekend in September, and I'll go over all that I've read so far this month. Starting with the series I completed, Silver Spoon, I read volumes 11 through 15. And I will say, I genuinely love this manga. I'm kind of sad to see the ending, to see it go, but I can always reread this series if I want to. There's two seasons of an anime for it as well, if you're interested. But yeah, I love, love, love Silver Spoon. It's about this kid who goes to an agricultural high school from the city. He has no knowledge really on farming or keeping animals, but he just wanted to get away from his family. And this was the easiest method to do so, but... Throughout the story, he develops so much as a character. He learns a lot about agriculture, farming, the business side of it all. So this is a very educational manga. And like I mentioned before, if you are sensitive to like death of animals, butchering, I would stay away from this. But this is such a great slice of life, coming of age tale. The characters are all lovable. The ending was good. It was satisfying. And I highly, highly recommend this series. And I'm really glad that I finally finished this. Took me a while, but I got there and I'm so happy I did. Next, I read the first volume of One Dance. It's a sports manga about dancing, so of course I had to try it. And like I said before, I'm not super picky with sports manga, so I really like this first volume. It has potential. I really like the character so far. The art is a little wonky at times, but basically it's about this guy. He's been on the basketball team, but when he joins high school, he sees this girl dancing and is like captivated by it and really wants to try it, but he is very apprehensive about it due to having a bad dancing experience in middle school. He also has a stutter. And yeah, I like the characters. They're endearing. I like the relationship between the girl and him. So far, it's not a romance. Just friends, and they're really good together, and I really like it so far. So yeah, I do recommend this first volume. I think the second one is coming out later in the month, so I'll definitely be picking that up. From the new, like, sports manga I've tried recently, I would say I really like Blue Lock, and then this, and then Run on Your New Legs is, like, third, but still good. Still all good. And then another one volume I read, technically a one-shot, My Wandering Warrior Existence, by the author that did My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness, My Solo Exchange Diary. She has lots of autobiographical manga, and of the ones I've read, this is definitely her worst work, but it wasn't bad. It's essentially about her thoughts about marriage and seeing, like, friends getting married and wanting a wedding of her own. But I think where this falls short is I think she had an idea about, like, oh yeah, I want to talk about marriage and love and relationships, but she didn't have enough ideas to fill a whole volume, so it did get repetitive. And it felt like more shallow than her other works, like I hate to say that, but I wasn't a huge fan of this one. It was like a 7 out of 10, like nice volume, but I would definitely recommend My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness or My Soul Exchange Diary. Like those were like 10 out of 10, profound, like made me cry. Lots of triggering topics though. The only thing I would warn about in this particular volume is Sexual Assault of a Child, as she recounts like an experience from her childhood, which was really sad. But yeah, this is mainly about her thoughts about romance, but also gender, sexuality, weddings, marriage, love. And yeah, some of her points also kind of feel regressive. She is going around in circles in a lot of her stories, but this one especially was kind of like, hmm, I thought we resolved that. But again, mental health, addiction, recovery, are like lifelong processes, so we can't knock her on that. But yeah, this one just felt more shallow and kind of repetitive and almost unnecessary. Like, I feel like this could have just been a chapter in one of her other autobiographical works. So yeah, the only one I haven't read is My Alcoholic Escape from Reality. My library has it, so I'll probably check that out. But yeah, overall, I do recommend this author a lot. This was just not her best work, and that's okay. Even your faves can have some duds sometimes. And speaking of duds, lastly, I finished Sweet Blue Flowers, so I got this fourth omnibus from the library. And in all, I will say this series is okay. It's a girl's love series about two girls at different boarding schools. They're childhood friends, and they meet again in high school. It's kind of a one-sided crush type thing, and the story just details a lot of other characters' lives, their friends, their teachers, and that's where the issues kind of come in for this series. A lot of the external factors, other than the main relationship, are weird. There's incest, pedophilia, so I can't really recommend this in good faith. Because of those aspects, there are some weird, like, sexual situations involving children, like, very young children, which is a shame because, honestly, this author has some of my favorite art and manga. It is so gorgeous. But all her series are kind of like a little bit weird, a little bit questionable. So yeah, would I recommend this? Honestly, not really. It's interesting that I reread this though, because previously I had given it a 9 out of 10 when I was like 14. And now that I'm an adult, almost 10 years later, my thoughts have like drastically changed on this. So I don't know if I just didn't like process all the things that were going on, slash didn't understand because I was a child, you know. But reading it now in the present day, 
I don't think it aged very well. There's some weird things going on, even though the main couple is pretty cute. And I think the ending resolved a lot of things. I wouldn't really recommend this. So yeah, that is all my thoughts for this first week of September. And I'll see you in the next clip. I also finished the farmland arc of Vinland Saga. So good, but I think I'm going to continue more onto the month. So I'll talk about it all when I read more. Hello, it is the second week of September. I am sweating my ass off. It has been over 100 degrees for the past two weeks with no AC, so I apologize if I'm a little low energy in this video. I might refilm it at the end of the month, but I like to do these like week by week so you get my more fresh thoughts on these series. But even though it's been so hot, I did get some reading done. First, I read the second volume of Blue Lock. I loved the first volume of this, and the second volume was not as good, but that was just because the first volume was like amazing. So yeah, they start the little tournament in this one, and the standout of the series so far are the characters for sure. I really like all the characters, I like their designs, I like the art. I hope this continues to have that unique plot that it started out in the first volume because I have read a lot of sports manga, so nothing really surprises me at this point. That's why I like the first volume so much. So yeah, definitely unique in the sports genre, and I'm happy to continue. I think they're like in the 20s volume-wise in Japan, so we have a lot to catch up on, but I will be along for the ride for sure. Unless the series does something really weird that turns me off completely, but I don't foresee that happening. And next, I caught up with Hanako-kun, so I read volumes 12 through 15. I was getting these volumes, like, every single month. I think I got both these volumes in August. Like, so much Hanako coming out, and I hadn't had a chance to sit down and catch up, and I am so glad that I was able to. This kind of arc continues to be really dark. I laughed, I cried, this had so many great moments, and volume 15... There's kind of like a switch in the direction of the story. This could have been the last arc because they are at the last school mystery, but there's a twist that happens and now I see how the series is going to continue and it's really exciting. I liked it. I'm intrigued. I highly recommend Hanukkah-kun. The beginning is more lighthearted and comedic, but as you go on, it just gets dark and twisted and really good. So yes, glad I caught up with this one. I got so many people like badgering me about continuing with it. And I was going to eventually, I was still picking up the volumes, but there was just so many volumes I couldn't keep track. So yeah, I'm ready for volume 16. I think it comes out this month. I swear the releases are so fast, but yeah, happy I caught up with this one. This is probably my favorite cover in the whole series. It is just gorgeous like this. If anything, just read this for the art. You will not regret it. Then I read the second omnibus for Tokyo Revengers. I continue to like the series. It's still covering like the anime content, so I know what's happening. I feel like I would be really mind blown if I had just read this manga first and not known anything that was going to go on. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this and I'm really eager to get to like post anime content. So maybe I can be shocked and really excited about the things that are happening in here because yeah, I really like it. I love gang delinquent series. So this is right up my alley and can't wait to read more. And Draken is my favorite character on the cover here. Next, I read the first volume of Monologue Woven for You. This is a full color girls love series. And honestly, I don't think it really needs to be in full color because the art is not that good. But overall, I thought this story was okay. It falls into the trap of another unmemorable girls of, in my opinion. Last month, I read a ton with a few standouts, but mostly duds. And people in the comments were telling me I need to read manhwa for good Yuri or girls love. So I'm going to try some of that because I think I'm caught up with all the girls love I own, except the second volume of A White Rose in Bloom. But yeah, this one was just all right. It's about a girl who meets this underclassman. She is in the like drama theater club at their university and she used to be an actor in the past but there was this big event that made her quit acting and now she's kind of battling with her feelings about acting and her feelings for this other girl. So yeah, it was all right. I don't really care about the characters and like I said, the art is nothing special so I feel like it was kind of wasted to do this in full color other than like some other series. Like I would love to see Hanukkah-kun in color or something like that. But yeah, this was not worth the price is what I'm trying to say. It was just okay. I think there's only like three volumes of this, but I don't really feel like continuing because this was just meh. And why would I continue just meh? And then lastly, for this week, I read all of Devilman. So I love Devilman Crybaby, the anime on Netflix. I watched that when it came out. So maybe in like 2018. And I didn't know what part of the story like that correlated to in regards to the Devilman manga, because there's so many like Devilman G, Devilman versus Hades, Devilman, whatever. And someone told me that this kind of like is what the anime is loosely based on. So I wanted to give it a shot. And overall, I thought this was good to see kind of the origins of Devilman and some, as the title implies, the classic collection, some classic manga. Seeing where a lot of other series got inspiration from was cool. But do I think this series stands the test of time? 
honestly, not really. I'll put the triggers in the corner, but yeah, the art was okay. The plot was pretty good. There was some kind of fumbles, like the whole time traveling arc. That did not need to be there. And there's a lot of nudity in this. I don't know why, but like everyone is naked in the whole manga. So if you don't, don't want to see that, don't read this. But yeah, I think the anime is a really good adaptation and I want to rewatch it. I haven't watched the original Devilman anime, but I've seen clips of the dub for it and they're hilarious. So maybe I'll watch that as well. But yeah, overall, I'm happy I read Devilman to see like the origins of the story and read some more classic manga because I don't read a lot of stuff like this. But if I were just to pick up the series and read it as like a manga, I wouldn't rate it very high to be honest. I give this like a 7 out of 10. It was probably groundbreaking for its time, but like I said, now in the present, it's kind of dated and there is some like weird plot decisions. Even though like the core message of the story is still relevant, like humans are the real devils because we're causing global warming and war and all this bad shit in the world. So yeah, the core message still stands, but some of the devices to portray those messages are outdated. So yes, that is all I'm going to say on that. And that is all I read this week. Sorry if I'm incoherent. I am like sweating buckets right now. So yeah, I'll be back in the next clip. Hello, welcome to another reading vlog clip. It is the third week of September and I've only read a couple of things, but I want to talk about them. And first, I read volume three of the Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting. This continues to be a great series. I love it. It has all the tropes that I love in manga. Yakuza, family, found family type stuff, slice of life. With a little bit of drama, you're seeing some actual kind of plot lines with the Yakuza in this one, which is great. I didn't know how they would continue this series. Like, I don't mind slice of life just being a slice of life, but when there's a little bit of plot, a little bit of spice, it makes it even better in my opinion. So I'm really liking this one. I also started the anime and so far it's such a cute adaptation. I'm only up to episode three because that's all that's for free on Crunchyroll. So if I ever get the membership again, I can continue. But yeah, really enjoying this one. Excited for more. I don't know when volume four comes out, but I know there's quite a bit of volumes in Japan already, maybe up to like volume 10. So we are a bit behind. And then next I read the third volume of Imakoi and this volume definitely redeemed the series for me. Volume two was such a low compared to volume one. And then this was just like major redemption is all I'll say. It was super cute. The kind of weird stuff with the sister was not in this volume at all. There's a potential like rival introduced, but so far the main character hasn't wavered at all, which is nice. And hopefully nothing comes out of that. No like big love triangle drama because the series does kind of feel like it's just chugging through the shoujo motions. Like you got every event under the sun, Valentine's day, Christmas, the school festival. It does feel like they're kind of just checking stuff off the list, but the couple is cute and this third volume was extremely adorable and I was happy about it and I will definitely be continuing the series. As long as more weird stuff doesn't pop up, maybe they were just getting their footing in the first two volumes and I hope it continues to improve in the coming volumes because I did really like volume three and I'm glad that I gave it another chance. And then lastly, I read volumes one and two of Our Precious Conversations. These are the Spanish editions. This is only available digitally in English. But I had seen a lot of recommendations about this one. I think Mangatama has talked about this, Shay Geeks Out as well. But yeah, it's by the same author as My Little Monster, which is a series I like. So I decided to give it a shot. And essentially this one is about this girl who confesses to this guy who she doesn't really know. She kind of just has seen him around, sees him at the bus stop. He said a nice word to her once when she dropped her papers and he helped pick him up. So ever since then, she's kind of not been stalking him, but keeping an eye on him. And she decides to confess and he is like, I don't even know you, like, sorry, no. It's really burdensome for you to like confess to me like this. Girls never think about our feelings when they dump this stuff on us. And starting from then on, they have these conversations at the bus stop about kind of gender roles and romance and love and friendship. And that is probably the worst thing about this manga. The conversations, quote unquote, are so heteronormative that it makes my brain itch and so like, why do girls always do this? Why do boys always do this? Why do they never explain their feelings? Blah, 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 blah. But if you take away that, this manga is really funny. I like the interactions of them when they're like at school or with their friends or trying to like solve some of their friends' other issues. Like one of his friends got cheated on and they were like sharing their opinions on that. And that was fun. But just like them having their conversations gets kind of cumbersome to read sometimes. So in all, I will say this manga is funny, but take their conversations with a grain of salt. Because, like, I don't think really in the veins of either of these characters. So it's kind of weird to read their inner thoughts and monologues and whatever.
but taking this as like a shoujo manga, taking it not that serious, not applying any of this to my actual life, I think it makes it a more fun read. Just don't take it too seriously and I think you can enjoy this one a lot, especially the funny moments really stand out. So yeah, I think it's only seven volumes as well. I'll probably try to get a couple more or Kindle Unlimited has volumes three and four to read, so I might read them on there, see if I continue to like the series, and then buy the rest of the volumes in Spanish. But yeah, the art is really good in this one. The main character looks like Saijo from Dokusei. But yeah, I like the art style. I like the characters. They're pretty funny. But when they have the serious quote-unquote discussions, it falls a little flat for me personally. And yeah, that is all I wanted to talk about this week. Not that much manga reading. I've been watching some shows. I'll probably talk about them later in the video. But yeah, Manga took a backseat this week, but I'll be back at the end of the month with whatever else I do read. Hello, it is the fourth weekend in September. I thought this was the last weekend, but apparently there's one more, so this is not going to be the last clip for the manga. But going over what I did read this week, I'll kind of lump these two together since they are a bit similar in tone. Volume 5 of Cherry Magic and Volume 6 of Sasaki and Miyano. Both volumes had like a big confession slash revelation in them. So yeah, I love these series. They're probably my two favorite ongoing BL titles. Cherry Magic especially, like, I just want to read this forever, but the releases are so slow. We're up to like volume 11 in Japanese, so yeah, I hope these come out quicker. Square Enix sped up their release of Dress Up Darling after the anime, so I'm like, season two of the drama, please? Maybe that'll get them to put them out a little faster, but I highly enjoyed this volume. And then volume six of Saki and Miyano as well finally had like a big moment we've been all waiting for. This covers up to the end of like the anime, so volume seven will be new content for anyone who has seen that. But yeah, I really love these two series. I can recommend them infinitely, and I'm always excited to read a new volume of these. And then kind of the big series I got through this week, Message to Adolf. Suddenly I'm reading all my really old manga, like Devilman, but yeah, Message to Adolf overall, I think was good. It's definitely a product of its time, and I wouldn't necessarily call it a enjoyable read. I'll put all the triggers in the corner here, but essentially it's about three characters named Adolf, during World War II, one is a Nazi, one is Jewish, and the other is just Adolf Hitler. So this just kind of is a mystery action series, but has graphic depictions of World War II. So it's hard to read. None of the characters are really likable, in my opinion. The ending was kind of weird with what they decided to throw in, but I'm glad I read this. Like Devilman, you know, it's good to see some classic manga, some stuff that has inspired more other modern works. But yeah, if you want some historical fiction, with a little bit of mystery and suspense, I would recommend this, but yes, heed the triggers, and I don't think it's gonna be staying in my collection, to be honest. Like, I'm glad I read this, but it's not something I want to reread and I'm, like, in love with, even though I can appreciate it for what it is. And that is all I read in this week, and then next week I'll recap some of the stuff I've been, like, reading throughout the month and whatever else I decide to. Hello, it is the end of September now, and I'll talk about all the rest of the manga I've read in the month, as promised. First, I read the first volume of Yotsuba, I recently acquired a good chunk of these volumes and I've only heard good things about Yotsuba so I decided to try it out and this was a cute first volume. Very wholesome, have a feeling it's gonna be mostly this slice of life story going forward. It's about a little girl named Yotsuba, her and her dad move, and it's kind of just her exploring this new environment, meeting her neighbors, getting to know them, being silly, being cute. And I can totally see this being just sort of a pick-me-up manga whenever I'm feeling sad or down or whatever. But yeah, I enjoyed this first volume and I can't wait to read more of it. Next, I read the third omnibus of Alice in Borderland. This was another good volume. It's one I already knew the contents of though because I have seen the show and the beach arc has not concluded yet. So I think the next omnibus is going to be kind of more new content from the show. So yeah, this one was good. Another brutal volume I recommend if you want kind of a death game psychological series because this is a pretty good one. And then I read the first two volumes of Oku because I was in kind of like a historical fiction-esque mood this month for some reason. This one is not exactly historical fiction, it's more of like a fantasy historical fiction. Basically the premise is that there is this disease that wipes out a lot of the male population in Japan, so the roles kind of reverse where the women are the ones in charge, they're running the country, they're doing the manual labor jobs, and the men are kind of just kept as kind of like trophy husbands, and the story of this is about Oku, the inner palace, where all these men are kept as concubines for the emperor, who is actually an empress, a woman. So the story kind of starts with this man being brought to the inner chambers and his story. And then in the second volume, we start a different arc kind of in the past, 
So I have heard from Tony's manga that this series covers a long period of time and skips around to a lot of main characters, but I don't mind that. I think these first two volumes were promising. I like them. The only thing I will say is these are very wordy and the translation is kind of in this like older Englishy sounding way. I'll see if I can find an example, but yeah, like tis not for tots to wander far away alone. Like, I don't know. It's kind of hard to read for someone like me who is not a English first language person, especially. But I got through it, it took me a while. So yeah, I'll read the next two volumes and see how I feel. If it's too much for me or too much of a chore to get through, I won't continue. But so far, it's pretty good. I like this beginning of this story in the second volume especially. Moving on to a series I like teased at the beginning of this video and then I never read more of it this month, but I did read the Farmland arc of Vinland Saga. I got these from the library, so I'll just insert a picture because I returned them by now. But yeah, what more can I say? The Farmland Saga arc was really good, sad, I shed tears. It started out like just manual labor, but then it turned into some fighting, some action, good old action that you like in Vinland Saga. But yeah, they're moving on to the next arc and that one also seems pretty promising. I don't know how much I can say about Vinland Saga because I know most people who are interested in it have read it, but I don't want to say spoilers regardless really. So yeah, the Farmland arc is peak. I highly recommend. I enjoyed it a lot and I'm just taking a break from Vinland Saga because it's starting a new arc. I have the volumes checked out from the library in my room. But I just wanted to read other things. As you can see, this was a pretty manga heavy month, but that is not all. I am going to include a couple digital reads I read this month. I tend not to read digitally because I have poor eyesight and astigmatism, so it's kind of hard for me sometimes if I don't have like an iPad. I can't read digital manga on my phone. So yeah, I was like in the mood for some shoujo. And as we all know, Kodansha keeps a lot of their shoujo under lock and key. So I was looking on Kindle and I just picked some random series. The first one I read was I'm in love but it's the end of the world. This is only five volumes. Four volumes are available on Kindle Unlimited and then I bought the last volume. I read this all in one sitting. Really cute. I would give it like a 7 out of 10. Nothing amazing but I like the characters. I like some of the discussions. The basic premise is that there's this girl with a twin sister and she's kind of been in the shadow of her twin sister for a long time and she meets this guy who takes an interest into her and she is very insecure. She doesn't understand why he would like her. Stuff like that. While this guy also has some traumas of his own. He basically takes care of his four younger siblings and he hasn't had time to really have a lot of friends and make friends because he is so busy at his home. So the trope is kind of these like two lost souls getting together. It's cute, kind of minimal drama. I think the conversations are pretty realistic and I liked it. I would recommend it if you want something cute and short and succinct. And then the next digital series I read was Yamaguchi-kun is not so bad. I believe that's the English title. This one is not on Kindle Unlimited. I had to buy the volumes, but I read volumes one through five. And this is kind of everything I'm looking for in kind of a guilty pleasure shoujo manga type thing. I am a sucker for like delinquent looking misunderstood characters. And that is basically the premise of this. This guy, Yamaguchi-kun, everyone at school thinks he is part of the Yakuza because he looks pretty scary. But once you get to know him, you find out he is quite a softy. And the setup for this one is very similar to a lot of other shoujo manga. Basically, he saves this girl from being molested on the train. And I know this is a thing in Japan, unfortunately. But yeah, same exact setup as Imakoi and my love story. But yeah, to be honest, this is like a better version of Imakoi, in my opinion. There's no weird drama, no weird tropes. The main couple is adorable. And it's just them being wholesome and doing cute things. And I really enjoy it. So I do highly recommend this if you just want something cute, high school romance with the trope of kind of like the misunderstood guy who looks a little scary but secretly a softie. And then the girl is pretty headstrong. She knows what she wants. She's not like a damsel in distress shy girl. She's pretty outgoing. And they're really cute together. So yeah, I'm glad I read this. This one is ongoing, which I didn't realize when I bought the volumes. So we'll see how long this goes. I think there's volume six out. So I'll read that one soon. But yeah, really like the series. Really cute. Highly recommend. I like it better than Imakoi. It is a similar series to Imakoi, but better in my opinion. I don't know if that's bad to say, but I like this one a lot. So yeah, that is all the manga I read this month, quite a bit. And I have a lot of more reading to do because if you've seen my haul this month, I kind of went a little wild. I don't know why I did that, but yeah, plenty of manga for me to read in my collection, but I'm excited I got through all of this this month and I'll see you in the next segment, I guess. Okay, hello. This is a segment we have not had for a while in these videos, but I have read one book so far in the month. This might be the only book I read, but I went to a big book sale. You'll see in my haul, I picked up a ton of manga there, but I also got a bunch of novels. So I figured I have to sit down and read some of these and not just keep buying them. So I started with this one, My Year of Rest and Relaxation. 
And this book overall was okay. Nothing groundbreaking, nothing amazing. I would classify this as a dark comedy. I don't know if it is supposed to be a dark comedy, but it was funny about the like really heavy topics. I will put all the trigger warnings here. Like, please heed these because it's kind of intense. And yeah, the plot is basically about this woman who decides to quit her job and take a year of rest and relaxation where she's kind of just hibernating, sleeping, trying to become a new person, kind of be reborn after this year of rest that she's having. And during this year of rest, she's like extremely addicted to drugs and she's not exactly a likable character. I think this is very self-aware, which is why I could bear to read it. But yeah, it was like charming. It was kind of funny, but I can see why people dislike this. I never read reviews before I read stuff. And looking at like the Goodreads page for this, it's very divisive. Like people either hate this or they love this. So I think I'm in a minority opinion saying I thought this was just okay. I rated it like three out of five stars. But this was a quick read. It was enjoyable. The main character was like slightly relatable to me, at least at first. But then once you get more into her character, you're like, oh, she is very unlikable and unrelatable. At least for me, yeah. She's just like this spoiled, beautiful, blonde girl living in New York. She has an art history degree and yeah, she's depressed. And the whole book is just her kind of sleeping, her interactions with like her one friend and kind of some memories. So the reader sees a bit of like how she got to this state and her doctor that keeps prescribing her all these medications. That was probably the most interesting part of this book for me because I'm really interested in pharmaceuticals and the pharmaceutical industry. That's where I work in. So yeah, this was set in the 2000s and something like this would never fly in this day and age in terms of like the medical industry. But yeah, I like this. It was a nice one to kind of dip me back into reading because I did take like a two month break. But yeah, I'm back in the swing of things. This was a fun read. I read it all in a day. Nothing amazing, but I would recommend if you want a pretty dark comedy kind of making fun of a lot of tropes of this like rich New York socialite type thing, but she's depressed. And yeah, so I don't know how to review books, honestly. Like, was that good? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I'll be back if I read more books. If not, I'll move on to the next segment. Okay, this is the last segment of this video. I didn't read any more books this month, but I did watch a couple shows I wanted to mention. The first one I watched was the first two seasons of The Crown. Due to recent events, everyone at work was talking about it and my boss actually was like, you need to watch The Crown if you're not familiar with like royal family British politics type stuff. And I was like, okay, again, I'm in like a historical mood this month. So I watched the first two seasons and to be honest, they were kind of boring. Maybe that's just because I'm not familiar with like the royal family type stuff. And I know this is a highly like dramatized version of historical events, but yeah, I thought the parts about the family were interesting, but when they involve like politics and real world events, it got a bit boring. I'm happy I could watch this on two times speed, but yeah, I may come back to it later because I want to see the season with Diana. I think that's season four. So yeah, we'll see if I can get through season three to get there. But I will say the episode about Philip's childhood did have me bawling. So the show is doing something right because Philip is an asshole in this show, in real life, I don't know, but in this show. So yeah, if they could make me feel emotional over him, it was doing something right. Even if I think it's boring, I can say that it's objectively a good show and I know why this is a phenomenon. I'm willing to give it more shots, but for now I'll take a pause on it. And then kind of like on the opposite but similar spectrum, I also watched the first two seasons of Bridgerton because <laughs> I kind of wanted something a little more trashy, a little more romance, whatever. And that is exactly what I got with this. I know Bridgerton is based on a book series. I don't know how true they are to the books, but this is just like good soap opera, drama, fun, messy chaos set in England again in the past. Basically, it's about these wealthy families and their daughters are coming of age and they're trying to get husbands during like the engagement season. And the first season kind of focuses on one couple. The second season focuses on another couple. I think that's how the books are. Like each book is a different couple featuring one of the Bridgerton siblings that's like the family. I think there's seven of them. But yeah, the first season I thought was like pretty good until a certain couple got married. Then it was kind of just like a bunch of sex in every episode. And then the second season, I think toned it down a bit on that and it was pretty good. But I don't know. I don't feel like that much chemistry between any of the couples. Maybe because their idea of flirting is like being mean to each other. It's very much enemies to lovers. And I hope that trope is kind of different in maybe the next season because yeah, I think the British 
term is banter. They have banter that makes them fall in love. But to me, it's just like enemies to lovers, basically. And that's been the basis of the first two couples. So yeah, I just want something a little different. I'll continue to watch it when I'm in the mood for something like this. But yeah, that is all I watched and read in the month of September. This was a long ass month. I don't know how long this is going to be, but if you sat through it all, thank you very much. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.